going on, guys? It is another one of those episodes of Civil Man's Comics and Friends. With me, as always, is my co-host, Jack. And as always, it is called Civil Man's Comics and Friends, so we have some great friends with us. But before we get into that, this show is all about mainframe Comic-Con. We got that Comic-Con coming on, virtual Comic-Con, this weekend. Make sure you're paying attention to that. We're going to talk about all this week so you guys get all the details. You're in the know. But either way, Jack. Mainframe Comic Con, you excited as I am about this? Oh, I'm very excited. You know, this is absolutely necessary for what is going on right now in the comics community and within the market in general. Uh, we are losing an entire year of convention seasons, and it is taking creative people to come up with new ideas of how we cannot punt this entire year and still be able to do the things that number one, we all love, and number two, the industry needs for the, not only the health of the industry, but the health of the people that are involved in making these books that we all love. So I'm excited for this episode. I'm excited for this weekend's convention. We've got two great guests with us tonight. We've got the man of so many hats. I'm talking about co-founder, producer, director, talent manager, as well as the leader of the comic courts. We've got Chad in the building. We hey, what's, all, go, hey, what's go going on, guys? But we've also got our first two-time guest right here on the Simple Mints and Friends podcast and that's a big deal uh but we've got our man drew drew manchu also comic core member killing it every day with that top five daily i mean absolutely providing the content for the comic community on a daily basis what's going on drew oh i just wake up i hit the toilet i check instagram <laughs> and i look at like cbr and i'm like well, what can i rub my mouth about today uh and it's been fun I know a lot of people put together the speculation list or the favorite list or the hunt list. I just make a random top five list about something uh, stupid every day, and we're having a whole lot of fun doing it. Yeah, I'll enjoy the wrestling one for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had a good time on that one. So I want to say also, uh, Mainframe Comic Con, we've had a couple since this whole COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever you want to label it. I mean, the big hindrance to comic books right now, but we've also seen – couple virtual comic cons or online comic cons but to my knowledge there hasn't been one yet so far so involved with the people that you have i mean i'll let you guys talk about everyone everyone involved so we don't misrepresent or leave anyone out but mainframe comic con looks to be this huge online success and we haven't even started yet so the first thing we want to talk about is chad what is mainframe comic con and how did it come to be it was a bunch of us so main, what, it, what it is, is a bunch of us were sitting around, uh, we were supposed to go to Megacon and uh, we, we decided, um, why don't we just do something online? It was supposed to be very small. We were just going to try to get all the community involved. Uh, I talked to Chuck from Chuck Little Comics and uh, next thing you know, uh, we had Kevin Smith involved and uh, then it just kind of escalated from that and it turned into a crazy three weeks of booking, planning, and developing. And what it is, is um, it was an idea to bring awareness to what Jack was saying to the communities. And a lot of these LCSs are taking a huge, huge hit with um, the, the comics not coming out on uh, every week. So what, what we want to do is spotlight the LCSs. Also spotlight those guys that are going to the cons, that are doing the artist alleys, that right now that's what they make their money off of. So we want to give, give back to them and then also just bring the community uh, in a sense of normalcy back to the community. And um, I, I think we accomplished that. Uh, the only thing we don't have, we don't have is Virgil uh, from WWE sitting in the corner with his NWO shirt on. <laughs> uh, working on it, Chad, some emails out to Virgil at the moment. He might he might get back in time, hopefully, if we have space. But um, like I said, it came together very quickly. And it, all proceeds that we raise or any of the Super Chats all go to Heroes Initiative as well as the Red Cross. Hero Initiative um, had played a huge part in doing this, working with us. Uh, Jim McLaughlin, who was on our show once. Um, twice. Got it, twice. Twice. Twice gave us uh, a, a bunch of um, opportunity to bring people on and um, it gave us the means to get into the industry. And then um, we, you know, from Kevin Smith to Ron Mars to Megan Hutchinson and then uh, her husband, what's his, what's that dude's name? Oh yeah. Tommy. 
Donny Cates. So well, somebody. Yeah, they they're all coming on board. Um, so it's gonna be a fun two days. Super fun two days. It's gonna be a little bit more than two days, though, isn't it, Chad? Oh yeah. Well, we're gonna have a kickoff show on Friday, starting at five o'clock, and it's gonna run right into our normal show, which is at ten o'clock on the Concord. And uh, we're gonna have some really talented artists, uh, two LCSs, um, and then a whole host of celebrity guests from Leanna Quigley. I- I'm terrible with names, Drew. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who's on the list. I know that uh, uh, Leanna Quigley was on the list. Cat keeps correcting you about her name. And, Bill, uh, Bill Mosley. Bill Mosley's going to be there. And then last but not least, uh, the guy from Ring of Honor. The Horror King. The Horror King from Ring of Honor. So uh, we're going to have a big panel, and that, that's really just a kickoff show. That's all it's going to be is us having a good time, normal Friday night, but um, with some fantastic artists. This one artist is so cool. He takes scripts from movies and he's able to draw with the words. So it, it's, it's, it's really unique to see. So I think what's fascinating is what you're, what you're saying here is that you're going to have a little bit of everything. So we're talking about uh, Artist Alley. You're going to get to see uh, artists doing artwork, live draw, uh, as well as the opportunity to purchase artwork with the money going to charity, um, yep. as well as the opportunity for LCSs to be selling books, right? So there's almost like a convention floor feel at points um during the show as well as panels which everybody loves getting that kind of inside baseball sort of information so you guys are gonna have a little bit of everything aren't you yep yeah and i think as far as what you can expect from our uh our block coverage of this event throughout the day is we're going to be bringing uh lcs is more as an opportunity to not sell live as much as show some of their wares that they have available through their own means of sale, Mm -hmm. Um, promoting their web stores, promoting their eBay accounts, promoting um, any sort of mail delivery or mystery boxes or whatever they are pushing. We want to give them the opportunity to basically let the uh, community get to know who they are and what they have available and how to get in touch with them. Same goes for the artists. Um, We're going to try to have as many artists creating live as we possibly can. But our artist alley is also on the web page. So there's going to be too many. There's not enough hours in the day to highlight everybody. So, but if you want to be involved, you can go to the web page. You can enter the artist alley. And there is an active list right now of artists who are taking commissions and the ways that you can get in touch with them for commissions. You don't have to wait. You can start visiting that webpage right now and start getting in touch with these artists who have made it uh, a, a mission to make their uh, social media, their websites where you can get in touch with them absolutely available through this website. One thing I like, one thing I like about that idea is we're seeing right now currently with everything that's going on, if you, especially on Twitter, you'll see it on Facebook too, but I see it really a lot on Twitter is people are for charity. They're doing the auctions, the um, portfolio. I forget the hashtag. They're talking about for portfolio day or this is great because now you have one central location where someone can go to and you have your whole artist alley there rather than someone trying to follow people's Twitter feeds and look at it all. You can go right here. Mainframecomicon.com is the website, right? Yep. Yes, it is. You go right there, go to the artist alley section and see all the artists involved. And I can't speak for them, but since that's not taking up video time and stuff like that, if there's artists out there that are still want to be involved, can they contact you and get their name on that site as well? Oh, most oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, we're taking people. We were added. We just added um, Brent Peoples is on the uh, site. Um, and, and a unique one is um, there's a gentleman who did, if you guys watched The Mandalorian, the ending at the end of each episode, there's paintings of the scenes of what happened. And that artist is actually selling the, that those prints uh, from there. And then one other guy, uh, Chris, what, Christian Gross, Gross? Gossett? Gossett. Uh, Gossett. Uh, Christian Gossett is a, a producer on the CW, uh, but he's best known for, he was 
he worked for Lucas Studios, Lucas Art, and he's the man that created the double sided um, lightsaber. He created Darth Maul and the lightsaber. So um, he's got a ton of original artwork from back in the day, too. So there's a lot of unique stuff, a ton of unique stuff. We also have links to uh, a bunch of different um, usual con vendors as well. Uh, I, I know when, when you go to a con, it's a nice place to, you know, find some handmade jewelry or some trinkets or, you know, maybe somebody has an Etsy shop where they make specialty coasters. We have a few of those vendors available as well. So check the, uh, check the website out for all the different opportunities you have to get in touch with just about anything you can find at a convention. Uh, I, I think that, we are kind of priding ourselves right now on the versatility of ways that, uh, that vendors, artists, creators can participate. Uh, and it being a virtual event, it's kind of hard to say uh, when you go to a, uh, it would be great, you know, to put a body cam on somebody and, and follow them through the con experience and, and, you know, map out an algorithm of how you best, suit somebody through a con experience but you can't do that so we're just loading up as much content as we possibly can with as much versatility to that content and then giving you as many ways as possible to interact with these people uh and uh, and that's really our uh, our goal we've got a lot of really great discussion panels booked including some uh, great publishers who are coming on board and uh, and some uh, basically with some murderers row of indie creators um, we got in touch with Rylan Grant. He's a friend of the channel. We interviewed him in Baltimore, and he's been absolutely instrumental in putting us in contact with so many creators that, I, I mean, he, we're, we're going to give him a Lifetime Achievement Award for, for this con. And we're going to plug his Ringo nomination, too. Well, yeah, if you guys don't vote for Rylan Grant's Banjax on Ringos again. Like, we're well, done with well, while we're on the topic of guests, you know, um, Brian and I joked that there were so many big name guests added to your slate that this is like the wizard world of virtual comic cons because you're talking about Kevin Smith, Clark Gregg, you're talking about Boss Logic, we're talking about, uh, you know, the, the Clerks cast. Tell me the importance behind getting these big names and the awareness that it provides to the event in general. Yeah, so literally... <laughs> We so it was like three days. Uh, we we were sending out emails and and we were getting some responses, not many. A lot of I'll uh, think about it, and um, you know what? Um, not right now, but as soon a as a lot of what's the catch emails, yeah. As soon as Kevin Smith's name was attached to it, everything changed literally, everything changed. Agents started calling us back. Uh, people started just picking up the phone and calling us and asking, Hey, uh, can you explain a little bit more to me? Um, that's from the Hollywood side of things. I, I mean, we were in talks with one person, unfortunately he can't do it. Um, but like we were seconds away from having Conor McGregor on the show <laughs> and he uh, he was like, I don't know anything about comic books. So what would I talk about? We're like, prop our 12, I guess. I don't know. Just say something. And uh, But he was all for it. There was just some things didn't work out. But everybody that couldn't attend, it, couldn't attend apologized profusely. And they, it was the, hey, I think what you're doing is great. And um, we, there's other people that are doing what we're doing, but the difference between us and them is ours is free. 100% free. Also somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 million subs. Like not only is the, is the comic core and, and Chuck Lota comics and chump cast and everybody who's involved in making this, like not only are we small channels, but like comic core is a fairly small channel made up of even more, small channels so it's like we're not even the small fish we're the group of minnows that looks that like a small fish the wu-tang exactly right but we are also the voltron of comics like it, 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 we can come together and tackle a problem that's so much bigger than we are individually so um and and again it's just that this whole situation is like i'm not gonna disparage what anybody else is doing with their cons uh there's a lot of them that are raising a lot of money for charity that's awesome. There's plenty of room in the pool for everybody to splash around. But just from our perspective, 
this is a for us by us con it's a con for fans designed by fans with a sense of community behind it uh, and that community is coming together for the best of intentions to save the lcs's that are the lifeblood of our hobby and also to uh, support the red cross and the hero initiative which are also fantastic charities that do so much great work and in this time of need for us to be like hey man like right now i should be boarding a plane to come home from megacon right i want i want to ask i didn't do that you. this weekend <laughs> uh i so we're we're doing this instead we're all missing out and we know that everybody's missing out and we're all we're trying to put together the uh i mean this this could easily be the uh the uh it's uh, the comic book it's the comic con of comics of, but it's the wayne stock that's yeah, what it is. right. This could easily be f the fire fest of, of comic cons, but we're we're doing our best to make sure that it's not, and that it's something that we can, at the end of the day, all be proud that we had a part in, and uh, we're putting a whole lot of work into it. And we hope that people come out, that they uh, open their wallets for these charities, that they uh, support these artists and these LCS by purchasing through them, and we're trying to uh, to do something great here. And uh, there's just a lot of moving parts. So I also want to bring up, you said that, which is great, is this con is free, right? You also said the proceeds are going to Hero Initiative and Red Cross, which I know through um, purchasing or the Artist Alley and everything like that. But is there also going to be a donate button, say, if someone just wants to donate for for the con, for who the proceeds are going to? Are you guys going to have like a donate type button or super chats or how are you guys going to work that in? So everything on Comic Core as a whole goes to uh, Hero Initiative. Uh, we also have a donate button on that's going to be live that day that we can tally up the totals throughout the day so that we can say, hey, this is how much we have. And then hopefully on Tuesday after the con, we're going to broadcast live of us don't uh, you know putting the money in the uh, the two accounts so that we can assure that it happened you know we want to be as as transparent as 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 need be um and that's the one thing that chuck and i talked about you know it's got to be transparency and when we first started out it was very very tight it was chuck and i uh talking and then working out some details and then there became a true division. It was like Chuck load of comics team. You guys take the Hollywood after it, it got together. And uh, so Chuck's team took Hollywood and we took comics and we took what we were good at. And uh, I think it, it came together very quickly. It, it's going to be good. I mean, regardless, but what's kind of cool about it is we've got everybody from every aspect I mean, there's not a lot of Comic Core people on the panels. Uh, Kat Ren is, she's going to be focusing, she's going to be doing um, Kane Hodder, right? Uh, JM, what's what's the guy's name? JM DiMatteis. Yeah, uh, Carson's working with him. Um, now, for our viewers that don't know, can you explain who those people are? JM, go ahead, Drew. Uh, oh, we're talking about Carson or JM DiMatteis? <laughs> both jm di uh is a, a well-known comic book writer and uh and was also the writer on the red sun uh cartoon movie that just came out and carson is c woodard 19 um host of most of modern men monday nights on the comic core and the inspiration for me to get up and do what i do every day uh he is uh quote unquote one of the best <laughs> And also you mentioned Kat Ren, right? Kat Ren figures. Uh, she has her own channel. Uh, Kat was, uh, we, she came on uh, for one show and we never let her leave. And she's part of the crew with her husband, Mark BKR, behind the bar. Well, probably one of like, the biggest horror fans you'd, you'd meet. Oh, my God. And she has such terrible taste in movies. It's awful. It's, it's, it's I mean, the worst. Attack of the Killer like, Tomatoes is my favorite. I mean, dude, if you, she'll say, hey, I saw a movie last night, and uh, it was the greatest movie of all time. We're like, what, what's it about? She goes, about a guy that turns into a snake, that turns into a, a shark that floats around, and then turns into a raptor and kills his ex-girlfriends. But his mom is haunted by the ghost of her long lost Chevelle. <laughs> and she's like, it's amazing. And we're like, cool, yeah. cool. And you're cool. like, okay. And she's like, you have to watch it. Absolutely. Like, Please tell me it's on shutter so I can just go, oh, I don't have that. <laughs> and, so, and then uh, the great legend, he's going to be doing all of the um, uh, spotlights on the LCSs. 
So from a you know a hype man, that doesn't get anybody more hype than him. Um, John's Comics and Kids. Everybody knows who John is. He's just one of the nicest guys. He does a show over on his channel um, with his daughters, and he reads a lot of Harry Potter. Don't know how he does it, but he does it. It's going to get sued. I keep telling him. <laughs> and then we have uh, JD from JD's Comics. He's on the Golden Guys on Tuesday nights. And, um, yeah, so – he, he JD is Mr. I want to give back. I want to make everybody happy. He's really, really big into uh, original artwork and he's, he's working a lot with a lot of these independent artists that uh, he spent a ton of money. Don't get me. <laughs> he spent a ton of money to get some of these artists. Cause he's like, Hey, will you do a commission? And by the way, can you be on the show? <laughs> so it, it came together. Uh, but like we also have other partners and I'll, I'll let you guys talk about that later. But, um, because we consider everybody family. We always say Core's family, Core's family. But um, some people outside of the Core that are going to be on it, uh, Reggie, Reggie, Sim uh, Reggie Simmons is uh, – Reggie Collects. Reggie Collects is uh, – I broke K-Vape. Sorry, man. <laughs> so he's going to be uh, hosting uh, oh, well. a panel with C, C – I don't even know. Who is CGC it? is CGC. what they're called. CGC. I think the viewers and the listeners know a little bit about a CGC. They're going to be doing some uh, some offers for the mainframe Comic Con, uh, so that is something you definitely don't want to miss. And then um, it's not a hundred percent, but it's about ninety five percent that J. Scott Campbell is going to be with them. So hopefully they'll be bringing an artist to that panel um, and doing some and, signature and series. talking about. A uh, and an off-site signing that you can send your books into, and uh, we're very excited for whatever they bring to the table. And then we also it's have CGC folks, but um, we also got uh, Kate Joel hosting, uh, and then also Sal and his wife, Sal and Tiffany from Comic Pop, Comic Pop, and then Comics with Bueller will be a part of the event. Yeah, and uh, and uh, here's I hear somebody else. But I, I don't think we can tell, talk about it. Yes, me. enough of this. Helping. Now, named everybody else that's involved in this event, you got to say, who else is involved in the event? I don't know. Who else is involved? Brian, do you have any idea who it could be? I don't know, but I heard there's some pretty good, friendly people, and they love everything about comics, especially when it comes to indie comics. Yeah, yes. I mean, I heard the host is a little simple, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's a man, though. <laughs> He's a man. Well, you guys said it. You guys are running the, the comic side of the convention. That's definitely our lane. That's where we live, um, and especially independent comics. So it is our pleasure to be able to announce that Brian and myself will be hosting and moderating a panel with none other than Mad Cave Studios on the Comic Core YouTube channel as part of the mainframe Comic Con. And we cannot be more excited. We're talking giveaways. We're talking interviews with the CEO, writers, Jay Sandlin. I know you've seen that interview right here on the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. So we're excited to get back into that. Um, 6.30 Central Time, right? On uh, What is it? Uh, on Saturday. Saturday. 6.30 Central Time on Saturday, so you got to be on the lookout for that. I know you guys will already be tuned in, but you definitely, everybody in the Simpleman's Comics family needs to come migrate over and show that support. So yeah. and we're also going to talk about this again a little bit later on, but everything we're talking about, we're going to put links to as much as possible in the description of this video, so everyone can just follow it and over to Mainframe, over to Comic Core over to anywhere that we can possibly link to will be in the description of this video. Definitely. But I got to give a big shout out to one other person because I've, I've forgot to mention him twice and he's, he gets mad at me all the time. Like oh, literally wait, call, this was going to come up. Uh, he calls me and literally I get phone calls. He's like, are you mad at me? I'm like, no, absolutely not, man. So Thursday night is any given, uh, any given, Andy, Andy given, given, Thursday. Thursday. That's why he's mad at you because you can't pronounce the name. I called him for a year and a half, Comic Book Man Andy. Comic Book Man Andy. Yeah, and I was like, oh my god, no, <laughs> but Comic and Book Mandy. Andy is uh, played uh, played a huge part in this as well, and I can't thank him enough. He uh, he he is he asks a lot of details that I probably glaze over. So thank you, Andy, and he's going to be a part of it as, as if he gets some time over the weekend. Um, but I know definitely he'll be in the late night uh, rounds as well. 
Andy's Andy, role in the Andy's comic core has definitely been growing as of late, and we are yeah. happy for him and and everything that he brings to the table. Just a great, passionate fan. Yeah, There's a lot of great things to say, and, and just an awesome guy to hang out with on a regular basis. Yeah, and He's I want to say this, and I don't mean this in any bad, bad kind of way, but if you fo- if you follow baseball at all, right, you always have that utility guy that's always there throughout the season, and he just comes on when it comes to the playoffs. He's the guy that gets you those wins and into the World Series and beyond. Andy is that utility guy. He's always there, nice, one of the nicest guys you always meet. We'll talk about anything about comics at any time at a drop of a hat, and he just, whatever you need him, just put him in, and he just rolls with it. He's doing, he's, like you said, he's got his own show on Thursdays now, that Andy Given Sunday. Fantastic show. Glad to see him doing his thing. And, I mean, the guy shaves his beard and it's back in like 48 hours. I don't understand that. <laughs> Either way, kudos to Andy on that. He, he's, a, he's the best. I mean, I mean, honestly, the dude, he, his last, last week, his show was awesome. I mean, it was something that – and he puts his heart and passion into what anytime he talks. So, super good dude. All right, for those of us screaming, we want the details. What are the details? Drew, can you give me an idea of what to expect as far as format and scheduling go for the weekend? Well, we're going to be having the Hollywood celebrity portion of the convention up front in the AM portion. Uh, Chuck Load of Comics will be hosting that with special guest host interludes. And that's going to run until about 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the afternoons. And that's when we're going to kick off the comic book portion of events with a CGC panel with Reggie Collects at 4.30 on Saturday. We're going to be highlighting a bunch of different LCS locations and doing uh, creator spotlights in the next hour or so. And then at 6 o'clock, we're going to get kicked off with Tim Seeley and Kate Joel followed up by the Mad Cave Studios panel. Uh, and that's going to be hosted by uh, I don't know, Brian and Bolo. I don't know who those guys are, but... Daniel Bryan. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and these are all Central Time, right? These are all Central Standard Time at the moment. Um, on the website, there is, is information as far as uh, Eastern Time, uh, Western Time, Pacific Time as well. Uh, we've got the uh, team behind Fight Club 3, David Mack and Chuck Palahniuk at 8.45. That rolls into our scheduled panels, which you're going to find at 9 o'clock. You're going to get the Publishing Your Own Book panel, and that is hosted by Ryland Grant with a murderer's row of uh, independent writers as part of that. We're going to follow that up with the Artist Writer panel. After that, which is going to have the team behind White Ash, the team behind Kanto, a couple of other uh, creators on that as well. And then at midnight, we're going to run into our West Coast block of LCS locations and creators. We're going to be shouting them out throughout the day. uh, Chad, you want to run down the celebrity guests we have for uh, the first day and then run into Sunday? Yeah, absolutely. We're starting off with a bang on Saturday the 25th at noon central. Uh, Clark Gregg and the, uh, from the agent, uh, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Then we're going to go into 12.30 p.m. is uh, the cast and creators of AMC series Nosferatu. Uh, guest host is going to be Joe Hill, and uh, we're actually going to be debuting their, their season two trailer. Um, at one o'clock, we have Natalie Emmanuel from Fast and the Furious and better known for um, HBO's Game of Thrones. And that is going to be a celebrity guest host, Jay Washington. Uh, at one thirty, we have a kids and a hall panel. Right now, we have Scott Thompson and Bruce McCulloch. 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 Um, they, the host is going to be determined – uh, but I do believe we may be getting the other three uh, kids in the hall. Working on a kids in the hall reunion, folks. Then 26 years of clerks, we have Dante and Veronica coming in at 2 p.m., followed by uh, designing the MCU's Andy Park. Andy is the person, the visual de- developer of um, Thor Ragnarok, WandaVision, Doctor Strange, um, and I think we're actually going to get a sneak peek at the first episode of What If Winter Soldier. 
Um, then at 3 p.m., 4 p.m. Eastern, we have Seth Green and Ralph Garman, and the host is going to be Ralph Garman on that one. At 3.30, we have a flash panel with uh, Sue Dibney, Natalie Dreyfus, and then also she's, I, th I believe Mark is going to be a part of that as well. Uh, and then 4 p.m., <laughs> funny story, she called me twice <laughs> yesterday. Uh, Back to the Future's Claudia Wells. Uh, she thought her, uh, it was yesterday. And then we have Tattooing ner Nerd Culture at 4.15 uh, with Mark Draven. And then uh, that leads right into the 4.30 panel. Then on Sunday, we start off at 12 o'clock with uh, Kevin Smith. And Kevin has a full hour, it looks like. Uh, but he's going to be joined at 1230 by none other than Boss Logic. And then at 1 p.m., we're going with Lloyd Kaufman, the creator of Toxic Avenger. And then uh, um, Mr. Morris from the new Bloodshot movie, A New Girl. Uh, Lamar Morris is going to be in there. And then David Dash, I can't say his name at all. <laughs> That's Ant Man, right? Yeah, the Ant Man guy. I cannot say his last name. And but it, what's cool about it is he has he's bringing on his entire creative uh, team behind his new book at I Dark. He, also wrote, he had a pretty Dark Horse. Book out there. Yeah, he's got a book over at Dark Horse, and um, they'll be discussing that. Two thirty, we have two thirty p.m. and three thirty, we have uh, Eastern is Kane Hodder hosted by Kevin, I mean, uh, Kat Ren figures. And then uh, at 3 p.m., we have comic book men coming on with Ming Chain. And then my buddy, this is my man, man. <laughs> this is my guy. He's called me every day since this whole thing started. At 4 p.m., we have Reb Brown, the original Captain America. And I have to say this, he won an Oscar in Australia for Best Actor. An, an Aussie, they call it. Uh, and then 4.30, we're, we're going to go right into Donnie Cates and Megan Hutchinson. Donnie panel. Cates and Megan Hutchinson will be on at 4.30 on Sunday. We have them for an entire half hour. We're going to follow that up at 5 o'clock with an Archie panel um, with artist Dan Parent. Dan Parent's great. After that, at 5.30, we'll be talking uh, to Bart Sears. That's going to be followed up at 6 o'clock by J.M. DeMatteis with Carson Woodard, 1-9. And we got the panel uh, for the creators of the Orville comic and the head writer of the Orville television show at 6.30. At 7.30, we have Comics with Bueller. He'll be on to interview Ron Mars and Andy Smith. Then at 9 is the next scheduled panel. That is going to be a how to kickstart your comic panel. Lots of great um, creative teams on the Kickstarter panel including uh, um, the team behind Jupiter Jet, Ashley Victoria Robinson, and Jason Inman. And then we also have Ahoy Comics on there as well. Ahoy. We also have a networking panel as well. And we're going to do a panel on web comics at uh, 11 Central Standard Time. And that is going to pretty much round everything out. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have some uh, events going on after the con schedule, but if that I, that web comics panel is something I'm excited for. I have uh, the uh, gentleman behind uh, three panel crimes and um, Dylan Campbell, who does scared by the bell. Some really, really cool uh, creators on these panels. And some other uh, people that we, there we're finding some spots for them is um, source point is going to have a, uh, they're going to be joining one of the panels uh, robot. Uh, well, I'm not going to say that. Never mind. I, I want to say Stephanie though, Phillips, uh, writer of Butcher in Paris, is uh, is not on the schedule yet. But I just got her email from her, so uh, right before we we started recording this. So hopefully we'll have her nail that nailed down as well. It's it's kind of fun though because like they all are home. They always are. Everybody's on the phone. Like they pick up the phone. They talk. Um, you know these agents. These they, I mean. I, I, the guys that are joining us on Friday, the the uh, the Qu uh, Leanna Quigley and the Bill Mosley, um, you can't believe how this is affecting them. 
as well. I mean, we're thinking that just the industry as a whole. These people do these cons, and that accounts for almost 80% of their income for that year. And they're taking a hit just as much as everybody else is. And, um, you know, uh, Red Brown, the prime example, that's all he does is pan, uh, cons. And one of the nicest, nicest guys, loves to talk football, loves to talk football. But, um, yeah. So it's, you went through a – you just went through a pretty hefty schedule, right? A lot of yeah. people, a lot of panels, a lot of – Still panels. a lot of moving parts to nail down too, Brian. So it's – and it's it's – fantastic like we said at the beginning of this show we've seen a lot of online cons but i don't think we've seen something as in-depth as this so there might be people out there going hey man i can't stay awake for 48 hours so there probably is some people that actually will but if you miss any of these panels if you miss any of these videos you guys got them covered right you're gonna be able to come back and watch these on demand at a later date right yeah if, absolutely yeah these are these blocks will be available as soon as they're processed by youtube on the man and after that i believe that we're going to go back and we're going to chop things down and make them a little bit more digestible um as well so this this content is not going away if and it's all going it to be on the comic court youtube channel right yep if you miss it live you're there's going to be a way to get your hands on it, to get your eyeballs on it. And we're, we're excited for everybody to have that opportunity. I mean, one of the, I mean, uh, and I'm going to give Andy credit, Andy and Carson are going to be the ones they've already not, they've volunteered that they're going to be time stamping every video. Now the key is um, there's something with YouTube that you can't run so many hours. Yeah. Eight hours. I think for, so to be on the safe side, we're going to go four and a half and take a five minute break and then restart four and a half and we're we're hoping four and a half if it goes to five hours then we take a half hour break that's kind of what we're we're working with and and everybody understands that um we've tested it we've actually we've talked to Streamyard, um and, and that's the one of the one of the programs that we'll be using and they're going to be helping us out as well by providing us some uh things that uh, because of the event, they're going to be helping us and utilizing some um, different resources that, that, that we don't normally have. Well, you guys had me sold at the Friday night kickoff show when you started talking about the Horror King, Vinny Marsala. I'm in right there. I'm ready to go right there. We're talking Ring of Honor six-man tag champ. And uh, got me at Bill Mosley. There you go. So, so kicking it off hard Friday night, keeping the action going all the way through Sunday. We're talking about having to talk to streaming providers and YouTube technical services. We're talking about this thing is going to be action packed. So I know everybody's excited. I know you guys are excited, but I'm curious if the, I, getting beyond this current COVID situation, if, um, this goes off well. Is this something you could see being a reoccurring event on a yearly basis? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we've had to turn people down. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and we've, we've been respectful to everybody's needs and accommodated a lot of people. There's some publishers and some people that we weren't able to accommodate because right now they're in limbo and we've had some, in depth conversations with them, they were going to be the featured guest. And unfortunately, um, they had some management changes and, and we were told uh, their PR is now being outsourced by another company and their marketing company. And we lost a good portion of the comic book creators. And it, it, it's tough to say that because you know, we really wanted the, them to be a part of it. It would have been a whole different atmosphere if they would have been a part of it. But uh, when the going got tough and we were struggling, you know, Hero Initiative stepped up to the plate 100%. Uh, and then Donnie and Megan, I, well, I, I will say this, Megan and Donnie stepped up to the plate. If you follow a lot of these people online, I mean, there was Donnie Kate sent out a message the other day on Twitter. He's like, Hey, is there any good games that me and me and Megan can play? And I responded right away. And then I was like, Hey, how about mainframe Comic Con? <laughs> Cause we did. he was the first person we asked and he was the last person we got. And he stepped up to the plate. I mean, he's doing some great things and they are everywhere right now. And for them to just give us a little bit of time, is super special, super special to us. 
we're hyped about it. So you mentioned, you, you've mentioned at the beginning and throughout the show about Hero Initiative. And before this, even on the Comic Court channel, you guys have been heavily involved. You've even had them on your channel a couple of times. Tell us a little bit more about Hero Initiative and what your involvement and how things are going with, with working with them. Uh, true, true. Well, I, th I think it goes without saying that the Hero Initiative is a cause that we all believe in uh, over at the Comic Corps. Um, we learned more about the Hero Initiative through um, charity auctions that took place through the, the community. Um, and shout out to uh, Strictly Comics, Edwin, and all the great stuff he did for that first Hero Initiative auction. He involved the great legend as well, which is kind of how we got our in with the Hero uh, Initiative. And I honestly think that the Hero Initiative keeps us around because they like legend. I mean, <laughs> pretty much. Who doesn't uh, like legend, though? <laughs> so, we, so our involvement right now and where we're, you know, we were supposed to be test running a con event for them. And uh, unfortunately, that con got canceled. In an alternate so, universe, I, I just heard that it, re it went really well. Yeah. So um, with all that being said, we came up with the mainframe. We reached out to Jim. Jim gave us the blessing. I mean, and then he reached out to us. Um, and what we're doing for them right now is they are hosting a lot. If you go over to their webpage, I think today they opened it up on their merchandise page. <laughs> You get an opportunity to have a hour long conversation with certain creators um, and their uh, artists and just different panels. Well, we are the ones hosting the panels. Um, these are private conversations. Uh, Chip Zardarsky was on last week. John hosted one of those. Uh, Legend is hosting David Gibbons here very shortly. Alec from Whitewell is going to be hosting Greg. Greg Recca? Recca, Greg yeah. Recca. No, 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 Brian Azzarello. He's doing Brian, Brian Azzarello. John's Comics and Kids is doing Greg Recca uh, on May 1st. Um, but Christina, our, our our contact with Hero Initiative, she's going to be doing, they have Scott Snyder, a conversation with Scott Snyder, a conversation with Tom King, um, Howard Chaikin, uh, Todd Nanuk. Um, Fantastic opportunities to get a, not a one-on-one, -on -one, but a, a you know, four-on-one group meeting with a, a creator that you know you can't get to answer your DMs. And they're um, putting they're going to be putting the videos up. Uh, Carson did yeah. one the other night with IDW. I just spoke with Scott Dunbeer, the uh, head of special projects over at IDW, handles all the artifact and artist editions that they do, uh, and uh, and had four other individuals just kind of ask them questions. When he told really great anecdotes, stories about you know, being in Darwin Cook's wedding and, and all the different places he's been and working with Jim Lee back in the day and, and, uh, and just all, all the opportunities that he's had uh, as an art dealer and as an editor in comic books. And it was a fantastic situation. Everybody paid for a half hour conversation and, you know, I, I was cutting them off at an hour 15, um, saying, Hey, uh, you know, you, you'd be gone over an hour. You know, and and Jim, your obligation. But they they were definitely uh, really great uh, panels that I've been a part of so far, uh, and just really awesome opportunities to get a little bit of inside baseball knowledge, uh, and, and and talk to these people. And if you, it's just the the list of creators that is on the like. How are you gonna ever get another opportunity to sit down and have Dave Gibbons answer your direct questions? So there you have it, guys. Mainframe Comic Con is coming this weekend to the YouTube comic community via the Comic Core. And we had two great guests this week giving you all those details. But that's not all. If you've got more questions, please reach out to Brian or myself. Reach out to Chad or True. Anybody in the Comic Core, we're happy to kind of point you in the right direction. We're all very excited for this event. And uh, I think this is exactly what the community needs.
Also, take this opportunity and make sure you are subscribed to the Comic Core. Hit that bell notification. Make sure you're getting those notifications when these videos are going live, when they've got, whether if you miss something, whether you want to catch that replay or whether you want to be in tune with the live goings on of the Comic Con, make sure you are subscribed. I absolutely advocate it. Brian and I are friends of the channel. We've appeared regularly on the channel. I hope to appear more in the channel and host more things and get more involved with the Comic Core. But guys, thank you for joining us this evening. Man, thank you guys. This is like an honor to be on here. Uh, um, I, I I just can't tell you guys enough. Thanks for everything you've done, and I I'm so happy that we got you on mainframe. But as far as Comic Core goes, we are uh, we're going to be promoting a little bit. Uh, we're going to probably have a couple new shows starting next week. I, I know we we're going to be having. Uh, uh, the boy who had seven is going to be bringing a, a game Another show. Another great YouTuber. Uh, yeah, he's going to be bringing a game show over. Uh, Ryland, we're in talks with, is going to maybe do a show called Writer's Block, and it's going to be with him and another writer um, that he's going to have. I mean, he's got a troll. Uh, like, basically, I was talking to one of the guys, and he was like, Ryland's our spokesperson. So whenever you <laughs> need us, just talk to him. Um, but on Monday night, we've got the Modern Men. We, Tuesday night, we got the Golden Guys. Wednesday night, we got the greatest show ever. Thursday, we got Andy's show. Andy Given Thursday. Friday, we are off. Great. We're, and Friday, we're off the rails, as always. But, uh, guys, thank you so much. Drew, what do you got going on? Oh, which Chad forgot to tell you. It's like, yeah, we do go live on the Comic Core every single weekday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But we also go live every single weekday twice at 1.15 p.m. You can find me doing a daily show, about a half hour to 45 minutes of me just goofing around and talking about whatever I want to talk about. If you want to talk about something different, come hop in the chat and tell me what you want us to talk about. And we'll probably talk about that because I'm running out of ideas for this thing. <laughs> Real freaking quick, I follow JB from Discovery Bay every day in a block we like to call the long botch, long, long botch, long box <laughs> lunch break. If you're on the West Coast and you're not eating lunch yet, I like to refer to them as my comic book brunch buddies. So, second breakfast. Uh, yeah, man, we're doing, we're doing uh, all kinds of second breakfasts every day on the Comic Core, and I'm going to have a top five list of some nonsense. We're going to talk about some something that's going on in the news. I'm going to shout out somebody on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, wherever I can find somebody to shout out. I'm going to shout them out. We're going to ask a question of the day, and we're just going to goof around, man. It's yeah, fun. no doubt. Like live every night. Usually, Jack and I record Tuesday through Thursday night. Usually, as soon as we're done recording, we stop, we pull up YouTube, and we basically have our own watch party. And we're watching comic, whatever comic core show is going on right now. So, definitely, the viewer, if, or if you're listening to this in the audio version right now, make sure you check them out on YouTube. That's Comic Core Channel. Again, we'll put links in the description of this video, so you definitely check them out. And as Jack said, if you have questions about mainframe, you can hit us up, hit Comic Core up. Or on the website itself at mainframecomiccon.com, they do have a contact button, so you can ask your question there as well. But either way, guys, thank you so much for coming on here. We are super excited about Mainframe Comic Con and, of course, hosting that Mad Cave panel, so be on the lookout for that. But either way, Chad, Drew, thank you so much. And this you. has been another episode of Simple Men's Comics and Friends. Thanks for having us.